Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Frank Sinatra in Wake Up and Live with Bob Crosby, Jimmy Gleason, Marilyn Maxwell, and James Dunn. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. There's a pot of gold at the end of the Hollywood rainbow for the right answer to the question, what makes a star? Nobody has found out yet, and I don't think they ever will. No two stars are alike, but each has a certain indefinable power, a power that draws people like a, a magnet draws bits of metal. I've watched that power at work for 50 years, in a lovely face, in a pair of dancing feet, in a voice. And it has come again this year in the voice of Frank Sinatra. When a star is born overnight, there are always the cynics who say, he won't last. But he will last if that mysterious power is there. And it is my belief that in Frank's case, it is there. For his first appearance in the dramatic end of radio, we picked a delightful comedy that made a hit on the screen for 20th Century Fox. It's Wake Up and Live. And assisting Frank to wake up and live is a quartet of people from the screen and radio. Bob Crosby, Jimmy Gleason, Marilyn Maxwell, and James Dunn. Every week, our job is just a little bit different. A new adventure for you and for us. And it's all made possible by a product which is having quite a few adventures of its own these days. We've just heard about one woman who made a single box of Lux Flakes last for two whole years in a Japanese prison camp. She was among those taken prisoner at Repulse Bay, Hong Kong, and barely had time to get together a few personal belongings before being herded off to a concentration camp. But among those few things, she managed to include a precious box of Lux, and so carefully did she use it that there was still a little bit left when she was exchanged and returned here two years later. She sent us the box with directions in Chinese on the label. I, I can't say Lux Flakes in Chinese, but in any language, the suds are the same. But I can say curtain in Chinese, Nienza, and it's going up now on the first act of Wake Up and Live, starring Frank Sinatra as Eddie, with Jimmy Gleason as Marty Hackett, Bob Crosby as Charlie Standish, Marilyn Maxwell as Alice Huntley, and James Dunn as Steve. Anybody who reads a newspaper or listens to the radio knows Marty Hackett. Marty is easily the nation's foremost gossiper and authority in general on the private lives of our prominent people. A harsh word from Marty is as lethal as a blockbuster. A kind word, like money in the bank. Millions read his column. And millions more listen to him on the radio, where right now he is concluding his daily broadcast with, of course, the usual daily poke at his friend, Charlie Standish. The main reason why Charlie Standish, the alleged orchestra leader, can never be president is that his head is too big to put on a three-cent stamp. How are you feeling, Charlie? Hmm? And now, ladies and gentlemen, until tomorrow night, at the very same time, this is Marty Hackett reminding you that a real friend is one who walks in when everybody else walks out. Good night. Marty Hackett has come to you through the courtesy of Bleecker's Lumpless Oatmeal. This is the General Broadcasting Company. Okay, Marty, you're off the air. Nice going, boss. Thanks, Steve. Oh, a telegram for me, Patsy? Uh-uh. One for me for a change. Who from? Let's see. It's personal. Oh, well, here. Tell Hackett that Kane and Roberts, America's cleverest vaudeville team, arrive in New York tomorrow on the Wolverine and will be open to radio office. Love, Eddie. Love, Eddie? Uh-huh. Looks like you've got some competition here, Steve. Come on, sister. Who's Eddie? Eddie's my brother, sweetheart. Oh. He and some girl have been doing a small-time vaudeville act. Any good? I don't know. I haven't seen Eddie in four years, but it looks like my luck's changing. Say, Patsy. Yeah? That telegram. What do we say we give your little brother a break? You mean a plug in the column? That's right. But Marty, it... Well, thanks, but really, Eddie's strictly small time. So I gather. And every smart, honest agent in town will know that. I don't get it. But the phonies, they'll read and believe. Oh, I see. Some of those wise guy agents have gotten away with murder, and here's my chance to teach them a lesson. Just relax, Patsy. 
and watch those 10 percenters fight for the chance to put Kane and Roberts to work. Patsy. Hi. Well, sis, aren't you glad to see me? So you've really come to pay back that 20 bucks you borrowed four happy years ago. Same old Patsy, always kidding. But I might surprise you, sis. Believe me. Say, guess who we just got for an agent, Patsy? Gus Avery. Oh, that chiseler. Hey, Steve. Yeah? My brother, Eddie. Steve Kluski, the boyfriend. It's a pleasure to meet you, Steve. Why? <laughs> Don't mind him. He's always that way, Eddie, except when he's grouchy. Gee, sis, that was a swell plug you got us in Hackett's column. Marty ran that himself, Eddie. A gag on those agents. Yeah, you should have seen what happened at the station. Fourteen agents knocking themselves out for a privilege of handling us. Mm, and you pick Gus Avery. It's none of my business, kid, but that Avery's so two-faced the barber's got to shave him twice. Incidentally, what brought you here? I told you to come up to the apartment. Well, this is the General Broadcasting Company, isn't it? And Avery's got us an audition. I thought maybe you could show me the audition room. I tried to find it, but I guess I got lost. Not a bad idea, either. Well, come along. Take Sister's hand. Eddie, the audition's in there. Say, how did you know? Isn't that Avery inside? I just followed my nose. Oh. Huh. And who's Miss America with him? That's her, Patsy. That's my partner, Jean. Holding hands already with Avery. Oh, he's just probably trying to give her confidence. In the audition or in him? Well, good luck, Eddie. See you later. Thanks. Hiya, Jean. Hello, Mr. Avery. Hiya. See, I'm going to like it here fine. Oh, wait till after the audition before you send out your laundry. Sit down, relax. Here, shake hands with Herb Spencer. You play the piano for Gene. And you? How do you do, Mr. Spencer? How are you? Say, Mr. Avery, do we do it in here, in this room? Uh, get smart, will you? This is just a waiting room. There's the studio there, see? Just look through that window there. Oh. Uh, say, who's that in there? Madame Elvani. She's going to audition, too. But she's an opera singer. We can't sing opera. Neither can she, so don't worry. Quiet. It's ready to start. But I cannot do it. I cannot do it. Well, Bunny, darling, it is so simple. You just see. Water. Get me some water. Then maybe I'll try again. Hey, what's the matter with her? Just Mike, Fry. Imagine anybody being scared of a little gadget like that. Pipe down. Get a load of Madame. It is no use. I go home. Just try. Try. There is nothing to be afraid of. Pretend you're at Lascaux. Now, come, darling, give out, give out. Baby, come, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, Hey, look, madam's folded up. Oh, madame, madame. Turn off the speaker, Jeannie. Right. Now, well, you're next, kids. Hey, what's the matter with you? Me? Oh, nothing at all. There goes Alvani, carrying her out. Yeah, just like first aid. What are you turning green for? Now get over there to the piano. I'll speak to the boys in the control room. You hear, Ralph? Okay, we're all sitting here. Start whenever you're ready. How do you kids want this thing played? On the piano. Four bar introduction and then two choruses. Can we start, Gus? Right. Come on, will you sing? I, I can't. Herb, Herb, do you mind starting again? <laughs> I'm awfully sorry. Uh, we got the pages mixed. <laughs> Come on, jerk. Snap out of it. Oh, I'm, I'm fine now. I don't want to walk without, without you. you. Stop it, stop it. You jellyfish, you sap. Ruining my act while Get you couldn't sing Get it. Get out of here. Get out. Huh? Oh, oh. Sorry, Ralph, you never know. Hey, Herb, get some water for the bum. He's unconscious. Yeah? How can you tell? And now a few notes from my old music book. Charlie Standish is now at the Hi-Hat Club packing them in. Tune him in nightly at 9 o'clock or be smart and just go to bed. Attention, booking agents. A few days ago, I ran an item about Kane and Robertson. Did you fall for it? Mr. Gus Avery, a 10% over the heart of the same proof... Quickly got Kane and Robertson audition. But Kane was not able. And Avery gave Eddie the air. Meantime, he signed up Eddie's pretty partner, Gene Roberts, who was now threshing at the Golden Arrow in Long Island. And Eddie Kane, the crooner, who couldn't 
is a tourist guide at the studio to general broadcasting. Turn that off. Oh, Attention, yes, sir. Attention, Cleveland, Ohio. Yes, sir. Those of you who are interested in final word on it. Kane, you're a disgrace to the guide corps. Just because Marty Hacker got you this job, that doesn't mean you can sneak in here and listen to progress when you should be working. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. In the future, I promise to do everything in my power to be worthy of the uniform that is my privilege to wear, sir. They to see that you do. Yes, sir. What post are you supposed to be at right now? The Alice Huntley Wake Up and Live program, sir. Well, get going, Kane. Scram. Yes, sir. Hi, Eddie. Oh, hello, Mr. Standish. Well, uh, you got any more gags I can use? Yeah, but let's kind of hide in the corner. See, if they catch me, I could lose my job. What have they got you doing? Same thing, showing people around the studios. I just came from the Wake Up and Live show. Gee, that Alice Huntley. Gee, I was just on my way to see her, if she let me. Oh, forget Alice Huntley and tell me what gags you got. Well, here's one. The National Marty Hackett Fan Club will hold a bridge tournament tonight if the three of them can find a fourth. How's that? Oh, that's terrific. Sold. Here you are, kid. Ten bucks. Gee, thanks. You got any more? Yeah, listen to this one. The vegetarians refuse to listen into Marty Hackett anymore. Why? Too much ham. Oh, uh, I'm not too sure about that one, Eddie. Wait a minute. I'll try it out on that guy over here. Yeah, try it out on him. I say there, my uh, good fellow. Who, me? Yeah, do me a favor, will you? Well, what do you mean? Well, listen to this joke and tell me if you think it's funny. Oh, shoot. The vegetarians refuse to listen in to Marty Hackett anymore. Yeah, why? Too much ham. <laughs> okay, Eddie, I guess it's worth another five bucks. Thanks, Mr. Standish. <laughs> well, that's nice going. Say, if you get any sudden ideas, you phone me at the high end. I'll be there in about ten minutes. Okay, I will. <laughs> all right, all right, come across. Here you are. Here's your two bucks. What about tomorrow? You want my brother should come in and laugh tomorrow? Yeah, same time, same station. Wake up and live. Lady luck is yawning. Up on your toes. A better day is dawning. Don't let up. Get up and give. Give yourself a shake up, mister. Wake up and live. Well, George, how'd we do today? Went fine, Miss Huntley. Oh, incidentally. Yes? You're all through the studio, aren't you? Oh, yes. And I'll only be a minute more here in the dressing room. Why? Well, in five minutes, we pick up Charlie Standish from the Hi-Hat Club. But as soon as this show's over, we have a cut-in announcement from this studio. So I'm leaving the mic on, save having to warm it up again later. <laughs> be a fine thing if someone should walk in or start talking in something. He'd find himself on the air. Yeah, accompanied by Charlie Standish's band. Well, there's no danger of that, Miss Huntley. I'm going to lock the door right now. Well, see you tomorrow. Right. Thanks again. Miss Huntley. Oh, oh, hello. I'm Eddie Kane. I, uh, I work here. Yes, I know. I saw you before, guiding those people around. Yeah. I always hear your broadcast, and I think you're swell. I mean, your programs. Well, thank you. What can I do for you? Oh, lots. I, I mean, wake up and live. Like you say in your program. I thought maybe you could wake me up. Oh? Well, what is it you want to do? Get over my mic, Fright. I'd like to sing in front of a microphone like you do. Gee, you got beautiful eyes. I mean, voice. Well, have you ever had an audition? Uh-huh. What happened? Flop? Right on my face. I fainted. Really? Yeah, you see that thing? That thing in there? You mean the mic in the studio? Yeah, it's not a mic. It's a monster. It scares me to death. <laughs> well, would you like to try again? Sure, but I'd faint again. I know it. Well, look, I'll be free all fr Wednesday afternoon. And if you can come in, say, at 3 o'clock, well, we'll practice with a dead microphone. You mean one that's, that has died? <laughs> no, no, I, I just mean a mic that isn't in use. After all, if nobody can hear you, you have nothing to be frightened of. Now, that makes sense, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Right now, though, I have an appointment with our boss, Mr. B.J. Stratton. See, you've been wonderful, Miss Huntley. Forget it. Oh, um... Yes? Uh, Charlie Standish goes on the air in a few minutes. I wonder if I could stay here and listen to him in your radio. Help yourself. Wish I could stay, too. Goodbye, Eddie. Goodbye. She likes me. <laughs> She's gonna help me wake up and live. Alice. Alice Kane. Mrs. Eddie Kane. Oh, gosh, I can see it now. Alice scrambling my eggs, sewing my buttons on, and me making good. A big hit. Singing with Charlie Stanish's band, maybe. Well, maybe you could, Eddie. What? Maybe you could. Who are you? I'm the spirit of the Wake Up and Live program. I give you courage and the will to do. Yeah, but you sound just like Miss Alice Huntley. Of course. I'm the spirit of Miss Alice Huntley. Well, how do you do? Eddie, 
You can do anything if you want to badly enough. Oh. What's the matter? I was just looking at that mic in there in the studio. A wonderful idea. Go in there now and sing. Pretend you're singing on the radio. The mic's dead. Did you know? Yeah. Too bad about Mike. <laughs> I couldn't do that, though. I might get germs on our mic. She said you should practice so you won't be afraid anymore. Oh, dear. I just remembered. What? The studio door's locked. Let me see. Spirit. Yes, Eddie? It's locked, all right. Too bad. But I have a key. You see, all guys have to carry keys. Then what are you waiting for? Just turn on the radio. Yeah. What am I waiting for? So long, Eddie. What do you mean, so long? Just so long. I'll see you around. Yeah. Now, where are those keys? Oh, here we are. <clears throat> me, 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 me. Hello, Mike. Made me faint once, didn't you? Think you're pretty wise, don't you? I'll show you. Nah, just sit back and listen. That's Charlie Standish playing. And I'm gonna sing. It seems to me I've heard that song before. It's from an old familiar score. I know it well. It's funny how a theme recalls a favorite dream, a dream that brought you so close to me. Come in, come in. Here's the script for tomorrow's broadcast, Mr. Stratton. Fine, I better turn off the radio. Now, wait a minute. Huh? Don't turn it off. Listen. Yeah, see, that boy's good. Wonder why Stanis didn't mention he has a new singer. Why, he's wonderful. Say, a singer like that should have a show of his own. Alice, I said a singer like that. Oh, oh I'm sorry. What did you say? Nothing. Look here, young lady. I can see if we're going to get any work done, we better shut the radio off right now. I should say so. Oh, Miss Arnold Stitch. Yes, Mr. Stanton. Remind me to tell Charlie Stanish to use this singer again. I heard that lovely song before. Herb, Herb, come here. Yet, Charlie? Well, who was it? Who was that guy singing? I don't know. It didn't come from the band here. Well, it must have been a guy in the band. Who else could it have been? I tell you, Charlie, this radio, wonderful invention. Wonderful. There's the engineer. Ernie, Ernie, what goes it's here? It's haunted. The whole joint's haunted. Yeah, but that guy was great. So was Superman, but he just don't exist. How can you say he don't exist? A singing gremlin. That's what it was, a singing gremlin. <laughs> What did they say, Patsy? Come on, what did they say? I spoke to Stratton himself. He says the singing definitely did not come from the studio. Then it must have come from the hi-hat club. Hello? Hello? Yes, this is Hackett. Now, look, Jack, fun is fun. Did that voice come from your club or didn't it? But we just spoke to Stratton. Okay, call me back. Bye. Patsy. Yeah? That was Jack McIntyre. He owns the hi-hat club. He swears the voice didn't come from there. Yeah? And Stratton swears it didn't come from the studio. Yeah? But the voice, whoever he is, whatever he is, is great, sensational. I'll say he is. And that means Standish is going to knock himself out trying to find him and sign him up. But not if you can help it. Right, not if I can help it. Here, Patsy, take this down. It's got to go at the top of tomorrow's column. Shoot. A sensational singer was heard last night on the Charlie Standish broadcast. If, capital I, capital F, if Charlie can deliver the same singer on his next broadcast, I, Marty Hackett, will make a public apology for all the true things I've said about Charlie... And furthermore, we'll give $1,000 to any charity Standish should name, excepting, of course, Charlie Standish. That's a lot of dough, Marty. I know it. Now, Patsy, let's see him deliver the phantom troubadour. <laughs> In 
just a moment, Mr. DeMille will bring you Act Two of Wake Up and Live, starring Frank Sinatra, with James Gleason, Bob Crosby, Marilyn Maxwell, and James Dunn. The other day I was looking over some letters we received from our radio audience five years ago. One of them might almost have been written this year. It said, about a year ago, my daughter was married, and she and her husband left soon after on a business trip, which kept them on the road for many months. I couldn't help feeling that the trousseau lingerie she was so proud of wouldn't last long. They returned about a month ago, and one day she showed me those pretty trousseau things. I was amazed. They still look almost like new. She told me she had her own little traveling laundry kit, so she always washed her things herself and always in luxe. These days, wives are traveling to army camps instead of on business trips, but Lux Flakes is still doing the same job of helping them keep their pretty things lovely. Yes, we had a letter just the other day from Mrs. Marion McCracken, wife of an army officer. She said, When my husband was assigned to an air base in the Mojave Desert, I insisted on accompanying him there. At first, my luggage couldn't be located, and I was left with one overnight bag containing a spare blouse and fresh lingerie. It was exceedingly difficult to remain looking clean and neat because of the constant sandstorms. But my intelligent husband bought a box of Lux Flakes at the Post Exchange for me. And since I was able to borrow an electric iron, I was at least dressed respectably. I rinsed my rayon stockings, lingerie, and blouses with Lux Flakes every night. And they kept everything looking fresh and new. Yes, actual tests prove Lux Care keeps undies lovely three times longer. Don't risk harsh wash day methods. Remember, your undies will lead a long life if they lead a Lux life. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Wake Up and Live, starring Frank Sinatra as Eddie, with Bob Crosby as Charlie Standish, Jimmy Gleason as Marty Hackett, Marilyn Maxwell as Alice Huntley, and James Dunn as Steve. General Broadcasting Company, I'm sorry, I cannot tell you. General Broadcasting Company, no, madam, he's not listed on any of our programs. General Broadcasting Company? Well, I've been trying to find out myself for the last two hours, and frankly, madam, it's driving me nuts. Sorry. 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 General Broadcasting Company has been flooded with excited calls. Who is the sensational new singer with the Charlie Standish band? Two days have gone by, and the mystery is just as deep as ever. Even Eddie Kane hasn't the slightest idea that the microphone he so bravely faced was the one that sent his voice across the nation. In the office of B.J. Stratton, Charlie Standish glumly listens to the daily broadcast by Marty Hackett. Extra, extra, extra. Charlie Standish is in hot water, and I don't mean that he's taking a bath. Who is this phantom troubadour? Charlie won't tell because he simply doesn't know. Here's what happened. During Charlie's broadcast, some wires were crossed and the unknown voice from an unknown source came through accidentally. Meanwhile, the fan mail, the phone calls, the telegrams continue to pour into general broadcasting whose worried general... That's enough. Turn it off, Charlie. Good old Marty. There's a man after my own heart with a knife. There's only one way to get Marty to lay off, Charlie, and you know it. Yeah, I know. You've just got to tell us who the singer is. Well, I can't tell you who he is or where he is, but I'll make you a promise, B.J. Tomorrow night, when I go on the air again from the Hi-Hat Club... I'll have the Phantom Troubadour there. What? Yes, sir, it's a promise. I'll have him there in person. Charlie, that's wonderful. Great little publicity stunt. I figured all along you had something up your sleeve, you sly old fox. Yeah, man, I'm a fox. And that was the voice of Bugle Ann. Now, don't forget, Charlie, you promised. Yeah, I promised. Tomorrow night, there's not a thing to worry about, B.J., not a thing. Holy smoke. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after promising that he would deliver the Phantom Troubadour tonight, poor old Charlie Standish did it again. What a fiasco. You who were gullible enough to believe Charlie and tuned in heard a pretty good singer. But was it the Phantom? No, indeedy. The singer was my good friend, the famous impersonator, Bobby Baker. And Bobby has just told me that three days ago, when the real Phantom made his now historic broadcast, Bobby was in Detroit. Hold it. One second, please. My secretary has just handed me a telegram. It's from Charlie Standish, and let me read it to you. Dear Marty... I am licked, but you can't blame a guy for trying. You put up $1,000. I am now offering $5,000 to anyone for information leading to the positive identification of the real phantom troubadour. And as a token of good faith, we'll post the money with you. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, a reward of $5,000 to anyone for information leading to... Hi, Eddie. Still looking for the phantom? Gosh, I should say so. $5,000 reward. You wouldn't know him if you heard him, Bob. Yeah, just my luck. I wouldn't know the guy if he sang right in my ear. 
But if I ever collected that reward, gosh, I could even... I could even... What? Well, ask her for a date, maybe. Who? Uh, Alice Huntley. Nice going. But what about that Jean Dame, your ex-partner? No, I can see now that all the time we're in vaudeville, she was just a real part of the act. And she's got a swell job now on Long Island. And a new boyfriend, Gus Savory. Yeah, I know. She told me. Say, too bad about Alice, ain't it? They're taking a show off the air. No, they can't do that. Why, she's great. She's wonderful. I know, I know. Have you ever seen her eyes, Steve? Gosh, and her ears? And her nose? Maybe they're just saving her for television. Yeah. Huh? Look, why don't you run down the hall and see her? She's sort of broken up, and she could stand a few words of comfort. From me? Why not? Go on, kid. Get going. Come in. Oh, Eddie. I just heard about what happened. Gee. Well, my sponsors decided that my wake-up-and-live programs were only putting people to sleep. They were not. They were great. Say, you shouldn't give up. Remember your own words. Put doubt and fear upon the shelf and seek the strength that's in yourself. (laughs) You do remember, don't you? Sure. And I remember, wake up and live. Be strong, be strong, and keep in mind my little song. Wake up and live, if lady luck is yawning up on your toes. Well, Eddie, don't stop, Eddie. Why, you've got a wonderful voice. Thanks. I used to be in vaudeville. Really? Sure, just small time, though. Say, what's that thing? this? Yeah. Just a recording machine. I make a recording of my rehearsal, and then if something doesn't sound right, well, I have a chance to correct it before the broadcast. Oh. Have you ever made a record? Gosh, no. Like to try it? Yeah, but I'd still have to sing into a microphone, and I couldn't do that. Yes, but just you and I would hear it, and then if you didn't like the record, well, you could throw it away. Come on, sing something. Nope, not with a mic. (laughs) Well, all right, Eddie. Look, do me a favor. Anything. Will you see if the janitor's still out in the hall? Uh, He wanted to get in here and clean up. Oh, I'll find him, Miss Huntley. I do it myself, only I'm supposed to be on duty. And look, promise me something? Gosh, sure. Sing one song for me, anything you want. Okay, as soon as I find a janitor. But no mics. (laughs) Okay, no mics. Don't be a naughty baby. Come to Papa do My sweet embrace of you Well, Charlie, do you believe me now? Well, that's a phantom, all right, but, but where on earth did you get this record of his voice? Never you mind. But I gotta know, Alice. You know Marty Hackett. He'd do anything to cross me up on this. Look, let me have the story just so I can protect myself. Well, the Phantom is scared stiff of microphones. He sang this song for me, but he didn't know I was recording it. Wonderful. Oh, but I feel I've cheated him somehow, not letting him know. And so I want him to get the $5,000. I don't want it. Now, wait a minute, honey. I can't give away 5000 bucks until he sings on my program again. And I can arrange that tonight. Oh, that's swell. Now, who is he and what's his name? That can wait, Charlie. I've got another surprise. The Phantom will sing on your show, but he can't go to the hi-hat club and he can't broadcast from a studio. What's this? If he knew he was singing over a mic, well, he's liable to drop dead. Well, then how can you possibly get him on the show? Listen, you know the engineer who used to work on my show, George Bartlett? Yeah. Well, George has rigged up all the apparatus necessary in my apartment. Yeah, all the apparatus except the Phantom. Don't worry. The Phantom will be there. And George knows just what to do to cut him in when you're broadcasting. The Phantom will sing from my apartment, but it will sound as if he's singing from the hi-hat club, see? You sure about this, Alice? It can't miss. Now, in addition to the reward, the price will be, shall we say, 2000 to broadcast? Shall we say, uh... 1000 Shall we settle for 1500 It's a deal. Now, when can you deliver the Phantom in person, and how much time can you give me on it? Well, uh, uh, how, how much... about a week? Oh, all right, one week. And uh, as a further guarantee of my good faith, here, you can have this, his record. Oh, that's swell. Now, look, Alice, at exactly 10.15 tonight, the band will play Dancing in the Dark. Right, and at exactly 10.15 in my apartment, the Phantom Troubadour will sing it. <laughs> Gee, Miss Huntley, it's after 10 o'clock. Don't you think I'd better go home? Well, of course not, silly. 
Well, okay. <laughs> now, let's continue with our lesson. Yeah, where were we? Talking about muscles. But I guess I just don't have any. Nonsense. You exercise your muscles to make them strong, don't you? Well, I try. And you do the same thing with your mind. Now, if you're afraid to do something, well, just say to yourself, stick to the task until it's done, until my fight with fear is won. Well, that's okay, Miss Huntley, but who wants poetry? It ought to be simple, like make up your mind to do a thing and you'll do it. Look at Columbus. Look at Edison. Papa Dion. That's great. <laughs> now, 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 come on. Let's see you practice what you preach. Now, wait a minute. What's that thing? Just a microphone, Eddie. Dead? Well, of course it's dead. But if you'd rather not... Oh, I'm scared, Miss Huntley. Okay, well, then let's turn on the radio, shall we? Sure. Say, Charlie Standish is on now. Is he? Oh, oh, well, that's right. Well, let's get him, hmm? What a band. Gee, it's sure tough he couldn't find that phantom troubadour. Marty Hackett's driving him nuts. Look, Eddie, this isn't getting you anywhere. What is it? Your fear of a microphone. I know, I'm just a dope. Once you said you'd do anything for me, Eddie. Well, if you'd only give me a chance to, I... I am, right now. I want you to make believe that this is a radio studio and that you're on the air singing with Charlie Standish's band. Please, Eddie, for me. <sighs> okay, I'll do it for you. Wonderful. Now you get set and I'll be right back. I, uh, I forgot I had to defrost the icebox. Okay, but hurry, don't leave me alone with this microphone. What do you say, Alice, okay? Right. Cut him in on the chorus and cut him off as soon as the song's finished. Right. Well, Eddie, all ready? Yep. Dancing in the dark Till the tune ends We're dancing in the dark And it soon ends We're waltzing in the wonder Of wine Time hurries by and gone looking for the light of a new love to brighten up the night I have you love and we can face the music together What applause Charlie is getting. And think what it would have been if he had the Phantom with him. What are you thinking of, Alice? Oh, I'm wondering what Marty Hackett is thinking right now. I tell you, I'm thinking about blowing my brains out. Find that Phantom. But, Marty, I tell you, we looked all over. You just heard him on the radio, didn't you? Yeah, but... And again, we know for certain he's not at the Hi-Hat Club. Definitely. Then he must be in this building. Steve, go through every room, every studio until you find him. I've got to get him on my program. But, Marty, there's 70 stories to this building. And if you don't find him and you get to the roof, jump off. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille returns with Frank Sinatra, James Gleason, Bob Crosby, Marilyn Maxwell, and James Dunn. And now, Sally has a Lux Flakes version of an old story. It's about Cinderella. Why, do you know she might have lost the prince if it hadn't been for something her fairy godmother told her the night she went to the ball? 
I'll have to have everything back at midnight, my dear, except the stockings. You may keep those. Oh, thank you. And could you give me an extra pair? Mine get run so quickly. Well, now, I wonder how you're washing them. Suppose I give you some of my magic flakes, Lux flakes. Wash your stockings every night in these, and you'll get twice the wear, just as though I'd given you an extra pair. So that's how Cinderella had such lovely stockings when the prince came to try on the glass slipper. And he knew that a girl with such lovely stockings and so little money would make him a very thrifty wife. That's a very pretty fairy tale, Sally. But it's no fairy tale that nightly lux care makes stockings last twice as long. Strain tests prove that stockings washed with lux didn't go into runs nearly so quickly as those rubbed with cake soap or washed with a strong soap. Get extra wear from every pair of your stockings by luxing them nightly. If you've been having trouble getting Lux Flakes, please be patient. There's more on the way. Lux is worth waiting for. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. After the play, we'll have a backstage chat with the man of the hour. But now the curtain rises on the third act of Wake Up and Live, starring Frank Sinatra, Bob Crosby, Jimmy Gleason, Marilyn Maxwell, and James Dunn. <laughs> Charlie Standish has pulled a rabbit out of his hat. For the second time, the phantom troubadour has appeared on his program. But the rabbit, Mr. Eddie Kane, is still completely unaware that he is the voice of the century. It's the following night, and Eddie is again in Alice Huntley's apartment, getting ready to sing into what he thinks is a dead microphone. Meanwhile, in his desperate search for the phantom, Marty has stumbled on a clue. I did like you told me, boss, and it looks great. Well, come on, what happened? I found a trucking company which said they delivered a lot of radio equipment the day before yesterday to an apartment house on East 77th. Apartment 2B. Microphones and everything. Who did they deliver it to? Alice Huntley. You know the dame who used yeah, to be... Yeah, 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 I know. Alice Huntley. No, Steve, sounds like a baddie. Why, what do you mean? Alice at least has some excuse for getting radio equipment. It's her business, isn't it? If it had only been someone else. Yeah, that's right, maybe. Well, I'm going to take a walk, Steve. Maybe I'll just wander up to East 77th Street. You never, never can tell. I may just happen to stumble over something. Eddie, that was the best yet. You sang as if you had all the confidence in the world. Right now, I feel like I could sing in front of an army of microphones. And you could. All you've got to do is concentrate and say, I will, I will. Do that again. I will, I... I did. Eddie, you kissed me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Stop being sorry, Eddie. I'm not. You're not? Gee, Alice. Gosh, you're wonderful. You sure did wake me up. I'll be awake all night now. <laughs> you better not be. You and I have a heavy day tomorrow night. Hmm? What's tomorrow night? A big secret. But how would you like to go with me to the high hat club? Well, that's terrific. Are you sure it's okay if you bring me along? I'm sure if I didn't, Charlie Standish would be awfully, awfully mad. Uh, nobody could be mad at you, Alice. Well, just be sure to be here tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Well, good night, Eddie. Gee, good night, Alice. Hello, Eddie. Hi, Mr. Hackett. Say, what are you doing up here? Oh, just visiting a sick friend, Eddie. Say, what were you doing in Alice Huntley's apartment? Well, she knows all about radio. Like you, I mean, and she's been showing me how to get over my mic fright. Oh, that was you I heard singing. You mean you heard me? Uh, well, well, uh, uh, sure. Fine, powerful voice, Eddie. Well, you see, Alice has got a phony microphone in her apartment, and I've been going up there every night to rehearse. And she's cured you? I sure have more confidence. She's making a self-made man out of me. Think you could sing on a live microphone now? Uh, I think so. Tell me, how would you like to sing on my program? Are you kidding? No, I'm not. Put you on tomorrow night. Tomorrow? Oh, that's much too soon. Now, listen, Eddie, listen now. Here's Alice, a girl with a great radio idea, and she gets bounced off the air. She runs into a guy who's scared to death. Puts her ideas into practice on him, cures him of Mike fright, and I put him on the air to prove it. It's a break for you and a terrific plug for Alice. You'd like to help Alice now, wouldn't you? You bet I would. But I can't do it tomorrow night. I've got a date with her. She's taking me to the hi-hat club. Now, Eddie, is that more important to you and to her? Yeah, I guess maybe you're right. Good. Now, don't tell us so. Be at my office at 12 tomorrow. We'll have lunch. Okay, Mr. Hackett. Yippee! Hey, wake up, Eddie. There's a phone call for you. 
Edie! Oh, oh. oh. what do you say? Telephone. Oh, say, what time is it? Only two o'clock in the morning. Hurry up. Gee, thanks. Who can it be? The Phantom Troubadour. How do I know? Hello? Is this Eddie King? Yeah? Eddie, this is Gus Avery. Remember Gene's agent? Oh, sure, Mr. Avery. Eddie, something, something's awful's happened. Uh, Gene's been in an accident. She's calling for you. She's begging you to come. You mean she's hurt? Serious? Well, the doctor just don't know, Eddie. Would you come? Sure, sure. Where is she? Long Island. Greenville, Long Island. 507 Melrose Street. You'll come right away, Eddie. She needs you. Please, Eddie. Oh, sure. Right away. I'll get a cab right away. <laughs> Boy, am I glad to see you. Jean, but I thought you were dying or something. Dying to see you, kid. Come on in. Yeah, but Gus told me that you were in an accident. Sorry, Eddie, but we had to see you. Well, now that you've seen me, I guess I'll go back. Say, what's the matter with you two? Eddie, you great big sensation, you. Makes a terrific hit on the air and forgets all about me. Oh, Jean, you must be crazy. Maybe someday I will make good once I do get on the air, What do you but... mean once you do get on the air? I know you, Eddie, so don't try pulling any of that phantom troubadour stuff on me. Phantom tr... Me? What an actor. Now, look, stop playing dumb, Eddie. Didn't I hear that voice of yours twice a day for four years? Don't tell me I can't recognize it anymore. Honest, I don't know what you're talking about. I gotta hand it to you, kid. What publicity? You got Hackett screaming for you, you got Standy screaming for you, and you just sit back till the right offer comes along. And, baby, I've got it. Look, if I were the fan of Troubadour, don't you think I'd give myself up and collect that $5,000 reward? Chicken feed, laddie. Chicken feed. What? Let me handle this, Gus. I know, Eddie. Maybe he is telling the truth. Gene, why would I lie about a thing like this? Eddie, look. Do you swear you haven't been near a microphone? Well, sure I've been near microphones. I'm studying to overcome my fear. Once I sang in Miss Huntley's studio. And twice in her apartment. Uh-huh. Go on, Eddie. Yeah, but every time the mic was dead. Oh, no, Eddie. That's what you thought. Every time the mic was live. Live enough to change your name from Eddie Kane to the Phantom Troubadour. Well, Gene, maybe you're right. What'll I do? What'll I... Oh! Get some water, Gus. But first get that contract. We've just found a gold mine. Well, I, I guess my goose is cooked. It's not your fault, Alice. Eddie's just a heel, I guess. I won't let you say that. He's wonderful. And don't worry, he's bound to show up. No, honey, Marty must have him. It was in his column this morning. He promised to have the Phantom Tube of Door on his program tonight at 6 o'clock. Eddie wouldn't do such a thing. He wouldn't. Well, Marty, we just saw Eddie's boss. Yeah, and he didn't show up for work, so they canned him. Well, search the city. Try the missing persons bureau. Call his boarding house. Just get Eddie in here. Look, I'm his sister. I know Eddie. He'll show up as soon as he's broke. Charlie Standish has got him. He's got him hidden away somewhere. Marty, are you sure you haven't got a fever? Why are you so worked up about Eddie? I should break this gently, but I just haven't got the time. Brace yourself, kids. Eddie Kane is the phantom troubadour. Yipe! Well, Eddie, you feeling better now? Oh, sure. Kind of silly of me fainting. My boy, you'll never regret signing that contract. It'll make you and Gene the biggest thing in radio. Sure sounds great. But really, I gotta get back to town now. Marty Hack, a uh, friend of mine, is gonna be awfully sore if I don't. And then later, I got a date. Well, gotta... what are you waiting for? Come on, I'll be happy to drive you to town in my car. Well, I don't want to rush off like this. Well, not but... at all, my boy. Not at all. Come on. Yeah. Okay, stick him up. Hey, <laughs> what's the meaning of this? Pipe down and do what we tell you. Hey, Mike. Yeah, Pete. Take the dame and that guy upstairs. Tie him up good. This is an outrage. I'll take the kid in the kitchen. When you're through up there, come on down. You can't get away with this. Okay, Pete. And find a deck of cars. As long as we gotta stay here, might as well play some gin. Help! Help! Good work, Mike. Here's your dough. Now treat the punk nice, but see if he stays put till I let you know. Right. All right, mastermind. What goes now? Uh, you just watch. First, I telephone Mr. Marty Hackett. Hello. Uh, hello, operator. I want to call New York City. Person to person call to Marty Hackett at General Broadcast. Hey, Marty, I'm back. Look what I got. What is it? A little present for you. I just happened to take a walk, and before I knew it, I found myself right in Mr. Charlie Standish's house. Of course, I haven't any idea how I got in. Oh, no, of course so not. So I hurried right out, and what do you suppose I found under my arm? Tell me, Stevie. This, a record. A recording made by the Phantom Troubadour. Give me that thing. Steve, this is great. Wonderful. Hello? Uh, hello, Marty. 
This is your old pal Gus Avery. I'm terribly sorry the Phantom can't appear on your broadcast tonight. Oh, yeah? Yeah, wise guy. You've been taking cracks at me for months, and now I'm paying off. You haven't got the Phantom, and Standish hasn't got him either, but I have another contract to me, and if Standish comes across with enough dough, he gets him. What makes you think he's the Phantom? Ah, uh, stop stalling, Marty. Stop it. I just want you to know that anybody who wants him is going to pay plenty. Okay, Gus, now you listen. You may have somebody out there, but you've got the wrong bird. Just listen into my show tonight at 6 o'clock and get a load of the real Phantom. So long, Gus. <laughs> Marty, you mean... Yes, I mean. Keep all visitors out of the studio tonight by putting the Phantom on. But only you and I are going to know it's a recording. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the nationwide search for the Phantom Troubadour is over. My uncomfortable friend, Charlie Standish, thought he'd have the Phantom on his own broadcast at 9 o'clock tonight. But this little pig got up very, very early. I promised to bring him to you, and now here he is, the Phantom Troubadour. Okay, Fant. Embrace me, my sweet embraceable you. Embrace me, my silk. And lace over you I'm in love with you I am And verily so But you're much too shy Unnecessarily so I love all the many charms about you Above all, I want my arms about you Don't be a naughty baby Come to Papa do My sweet embrace of you Can I tell you, Gus, there's some mistake. It's ridiculous. Don't tell me, sister. I heard the Phantom before. And that was the Phantom just now on Hackett's program. You dizzy dame, you. I could have you pinched for impersonating a brain. Don't you talk to me like that, you conniving Shut up. Kisler. You see this contract? 3,000 bucks a week for Kane and Roberts, eh? Well, watch, sister, watch. You can't do that. You can't. Now, I just did, didn't I? That's what I think of Kane and Roberts. Hey, Mike, come in here. Yeah, Gus. Untie that bum you got in there and kick him out. Throw him out of here. Oh, boss, you mean now? Yeah, now. Oh, gee, I got Pete in there on a blitz. Gee, it's sure as swell of you to give me a lift, mister Nah, that's okay, buddy Say, how long before we get to New York? Oh, another half hour, I guess Do you mind if I turn on the radio? Nah, nah, go ahead Maybe you can get the symphony Ah, oh, gee, I sure love the symphony well, I was hoping I could hear Charlie Standish at the Hi-Hat Club. Well, okay, get him if you got him. Me, I like the symphony. You like Standish, I like Stukowski. That's what makes a world go round. Yeah. Hey, listen. Well, folks, this is Charlie Standish, and Hitler should have my headache. The Phantom is not here. I bow my weary noggin at defeat and turn the microphone over to Marty Hackett. I've laid an egg, and here he is to crow over it. Marty Hackett. Hey, there's Marty Hackett. Me, I like Deems Taylor. Yes, folks, it looks like poor old Charles has been caught in his own mousetrap. But in all fairness, I want to confess that what you heard on my program early tonight was not the Phantom. It was only a recording of his voice. I only hope you'll all believe me when I tell you I did it with the best intentions. And now, a word from the Wake Up and Lift girl, Miss Alice Huntley. Alice. Eddie, wherever you are, if you're listening in, please come over here and sing. At least you've got to try. This is your big chance, Eddie. 
The chance you've been waiting for. Oh, you can't fail now. It means too much to, well, to both of us. I'm going away, Eddie, so please come, if only to say goodbye. I'm coming, Alice. Don't worry, darling. I'm coming as fast as I can. Hey, did you say something, buddy? Yeah, that's Alice. She wants me. Me, Eddie Kane, the fan of Troubadour. Turn that thing off. Look, when I picked you up, where'd you say you was? I was at Greenville. You sure it was in Central Islip? Sure, I'm sure. What Central Islip? That's where they keep the booby hatch. Oh, no. Like I told you, I was in Greenville. A couple of mugs had me tied up in the kitchen while they played gin rummy. Well, that's different. What? Better, let's get out of here. <laughs> Leaving us so early, Mr. Hackett? Yeah, well, I'm ashamed to be seen in public. Oh, all of us make mistakes now and then. All of us is right. I did, Charlie Standish did, and that poor little girl in there, Alice Huntley. Well, here you are, Al. Thanks, Mr. Hackett. Shall I get a cab? No, I'll walk. Say, if you see anything that looks like a phantom troubadour, call me at the office. Right. Good night. So long, phantom. See you in Central Ice Slip. So long. Thanks a million. Hey, where do you think you're going? This is the hi-hat club. Inside, she's waiting for me. Oh, she is. And how do you think she'll feel when you come in in street clothes? Shame on you. Please, pal, I gotta get in there. There's a girl in there. There's a lot of girls in there. Go on now, buddy, scram. Have a heart, will you, mister? Hey, wait a minute, who's that? Say, Mr. Hackett, Mr. Hackett. Yeah? Eddie! Mr. Hackett, do you suppose you could get me inside? Alice is in there, and I heard her say that she... I'll say you're going in, Al. Yes, sir? Fling wide those golden gates. Yes, sir. Come on, Eddie. Yes, sir, Mr. Hackett. Charlie! Charlie Standish! You back again, Marty? Quick, Charlie, accord and G. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Alice Huntley and that old broken-down friend of ours, Charlie Standish, I take great pleasure in presenting at last, finally, and in person, the Phantom Troubadour, Eddie Kane. <laughs> Eddie! Oh, Eddie! Gee, Alice... You're wonderful. How about a song, Eddie? What'd he say? Say, I will, Eddie. Please say, I will. I will, Eddie, I will. I mean, uh, I will. Alice, you're not going away, are you? I'm afraid I am, darling. With you on a honeymoon. Extra, extra, extra. The voices you just heard, ladies and gentlemen, were those of Alice Huntley proposing and Mr. Eddie Kane accepting. Leap year, you know. And their advice to you is... Wake up and live If lady luck is yawning Up on your toes A better day is coming Before our stars return for a curtain call... Let's hear the story of Betty, the bustling housewife. Betty was busy as a bee from morning to night, cooking, my, what apple pie she could make, cleaning, and her house was neat as a pin, dishwashing, ah, uh, that was the trouble, and worst of all, dishpan hands. At least that's what Betty thought. But one day her grocer was out of her regular dishwashing soap, and he said, Ma'am, why don't you get a box of Lux Flakes instead? It's what my wife uses for washing dishes. So Betty took the Lux, and was she surprised? Those ugly red dishpan hands soon changed to lovely white Lux hands. Yes, in a very few days, she noticed her hands growing lovelier. Now that's a true story. And what's more, you can prove it yourself at almost no cost. Start tomorrow morning to change dishpan hands to Lux hands. For less than a penny a day. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. There's always someone new under the Hollywood sun. Right now, it's Frank Sinatra. And here he is for a curtain call with Bob Crosby and Jimmy Gleason. Yeah, and I'd like to know what Crosby's doing in enemy country. Maybe Bob came to sing. No, I came to spy for Bing. Well, look, <laughs> you can tell El Bingo we got a new man in the racket. You mean the Mazzy Dotes King? Who else? The night Mr. DeMille sang Mazzy Dotes over on my show, the Hepcats howled from coast to coast. <laughs> Say, Mr. DeMille, how's about a fast chorus or two right now? Well, I, 
I'm sorry, Frank, but uh, I have to be very dignified here. You know, producer and everything. You mean you never sing here? Well, confidentially, Frank, nobody has ever asked me. Go ahead and ask him, yeah, Jimmy. Go ask him yourself. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I about decided to, to retire as a singer. <laughs> Perhaps your new son would care to take my place, Frank. Well, it could be. Say, they tell me that kid has a future. What's the first sound you'd expect him to make after he was born, Mr. DeMille? Ah. Ah, <laughs> well, that's a sheep. Well, they tell me Frank Sinatra Jr. did nothing like that. The doctor gave him a little spank, and the kid sang, My heart begins to pound and pound and pound. <laughs> did, they, did the doctor faint? No, but three nurses swooned. <laughs> well, unless the nurses were over 60, he can't take my place. <laughs> What's the play here next week, Mr. DeMille? Uh, it's one of the finest pictures to come out of the war, Frank. It's the 20th Century Fox dramatic hit, Guadalcanal Diary. And we'll have the same stars you saw in the picture. William Bendix, Preston Foster, and Lloyd Nolan. America's fighting men have gone a long way since Guadalcanal, but that first step will always be one of the most thrilling acts in the drama of the long road to Tokyo. Our hero next week is not one man, it's the United States Marine Corps. Well, that was a great picture, Mr. DeMille. I want to hear your production. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Wake up and live with good advice. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Preston Foster, William Bendix, and Lloyd Nolan in Guadalcanal Diary with Richard Jekyll. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, a majority of American families will have to file an income tax return by March 15th. Withholding payments already made from wages and salaries do not relieve you from the obligation of filing a return. You can help your government by doing this early. Frank Sinatra is currently seen in the RKO picture, Higher and Higher. He appeared tonight through the courtesy of the Lucky Strike Hit Parade and Vins. Marilyn Maxwell, through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Studios, producers of Madame Curie, one of the pictures just nominated for the Academy Award. And Bob Crosby, through the courtesy of the makers of Old Golds. James Gleason was heard through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studio, producers of The Sullivans. Heard in tonight's play were Charles Seal, B. Benaderet, John McIntyre, Kathy Lewis, Alice Mock, Leo Cleary, Arthur Q. Bryan, Ed Emerson, Eddie Marr, Stanley Farrar, Norman Field, Truda Marson, Tyler McVeigh, and Verna Felton. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our Lux Radio Theater production of Wake Up and Live, starring Frank Sinatra with Bob Crosby, Jimmy Gleason, Marilyn Maxwell, and James Dunn, has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Flakes, the tissue-thin soap used by smart housewives everywhere. In the Lux Radio Theater next week, we will have, as usual, our producer, Cecil B. DeMille. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Preston Foster, Lloyd Nolan, and William Bendix in Guadalcanal Diary with Richard Jagel. Attention, Victory Gardeners. Scry offers you Aunt Jenny's Rainbow Victory Garden. Six kinds of choice vegetable seeds. Marglobe tomatoes, Emperor carrots, famous varieties of Swiss chard, lettuce, beets, radishes, and five rainbow gladiolus bulbs in glorious colors. Send name and address with 15 cents in coin to Aunt Jenny, 
Box 3, New York 8, New York. Or for limited to United States of America. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>